All right, it's been a while since I give any kind of update on the uh, the W123, but let's uh, let's take a little ride and I'll run through the three things I, I like the most about uh, my 1984 uh, Mercedes 300 turbo diesel sedan. All right, so before we go into the actual content of this video I just wanted to give you a brief overview of myself and Mercedes um, I've I've always owned older Mercedes um, it was kind of the first um, interesting car that I ever ever, ever purchased myself uh, my first car was a 1988 uh, w126 420 SEL uh, I picked it up when I was in high school uh, for about 800 bucks it had 210,000 miles on it. Uh, it was black, gray interior, two-tone. Uh, apparently, the previous owner had uh, replaced the motor 80,000 miles ago. So, in my world, that was pretty much new. Uh, I drove that car home uh, before I realized that there was no transmission fluid in it. And, uh, and that started my journey on how to kind of maintain and work on and kind of uh, live in the world of old Mercedes Benz. Uh, I remember I got an account on Benz World and spent the next three or four years uh, combing through pretty much all the threads, learning all the, the kind of DIY details on how to maintain and keep the old Mercedes up and running. And I kind of fell in love with the uh, with the cars themselves because they're, they're pretty, they're fairly user friendly uh, with the way things are documented on the internet these days. Every, you know, conceivable uh, repair item and you know scenario to fix something or diagnose something has been either documented or you know laid out whether it be on YouTube or a form or something like that so again I always fell in love with the chassis I've owned a bunch of Mercedes since then you know owning old Mercedes like BMWs leads to owning more old Mercedes and uh, you know it's all usually it's about how much room you have or how much uh, capacity you have to work on old projects and uh, with this one you know again this is not my one of my bucket list Mercedes but there's something about a W123 chassis that I think every car guy or every Mercedes uh, enthusiast has to own at some point just because of the robust you know nature of this platform and pretty much everything that goes along with it I mean it's just it's such a great iconic uh, Mercedes and uh, you know like them or hate them um, you know it, it, they are great looking uh, user-friendly cars that I think like just have to be you have to own one at one point you know it's uh, kind of like an old uh, an old Corvette or a wagon or, a, or an air-cooled Porsche or something like that it's just a t pretty timeless car that can uh, kind of blend in most places so Let's, uh, let's jump into the things that I like about this car. Um, the first one, like I just said, is the, uh, the looks and the timeless styling. I mean, this car, absolutely, it can blend in anywhere. Um, in any type of car, culture, community, cars and coffee, it doesn't matter where you are. Uh, if you've got a W123, you know, no matter what it looks like, how much you paid for it, there's a guy that's gonna come up to you with a story. Um, and that is just kind of the interesting nature about these cars. There's just so many people that have so many stories, experiences uh, in all different classes of, uh, you know, financial status. You know, it could be, it doesn't matter what you know about cars. You know, at some point you've had an experience with a W123 Mercedes or, or one one. Um, you know, they made uh, the CE, they made a coupe version, they made the, the sedan and the wagon. Um, I think the best looking is the wagons, but they're kind of getting rare to find these days in decent condition. They've also gone up significantly in value. Uh, so yeah, it's just really about the, 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 what you can find and, uh, and what your capacity is to either maintain it or have that be a, a car for your hobbies. All right, let's, uh, let's continue on with the W123's looks. Um, you know, there's not many people that aren't familiar with what a W123 look like, looks like because from a design standpoint, it is the, almost the epitome of the perfect uh, shape of a sedan or of a car. I mean, the, the proportions are almost perfect on it. 
uh, a slightly longer you know bonnet line to trunk line to roof line with the chrome accents um, you know as far as everything is concerned here it's it's just a, a very utilitarianly you know accurate depiction of what a car should look like if you if you, if you ask a little kid to draw a car, he'll probably draw something that's pretty similar to a W123. Um, you know, especially with the, uh, you know, the, the dual headlights, the way the grill is. I mean, it's just, it's just very pleasing to the eye from a design standpoint. Um, and even though it can be said it's utilitarian, as far as you know, typical German design language, um, it's still, it's still a very friendly look as well. You know, it's it is it's a masculine-looking car, um, but at the same time, it doesn't come off as you know, uh, especially uh, sporty. I mean, anyone anyone can can have one of these, and uh, like I said, either either blend in with all the aspects of the car community, or just daily drive it. You know, it doesn't have to be an enthusiast car, but at the end of the day, it really is, especially with it being uh, especially with it being a diesel, it just adds a little bit of quirk to it that uh, most people don't uh, anticipate until they realize that they are, uh, they are diesel powered cars. That brings you to point number two, uh, the, uh, the build quality and the uh, mechanical nature of these cars. Um, again, everyone knows the backstory of W123. It's just widely renowned as one of the most solidly built and long-lasting, long, long-lasting engineered cars on the road. Everybody knows how they're used in Europe as taxis and whatnot. But you know, as all of those mantras and uh, and um, trademarks that I guess you could associate with this car, they. They're they're true. They're correct. You know what I mean. It, 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 this the W one twenty one twenty three and the W one twenty six. I think are the gold standard for I think uh, build quality and durability, and they really do stand the test of time. And this car is a nineteen eighty four. You know, it's it's thirty plus years old, and it still looks great, and it's fairly original. Um, there's so many little aspects of these cars that people have covered and. You know, I don't want to go through every single one of them, but you know, there's just so many little, um, little Easter eggs as far as how things feel that really make this car. Uh, it really brings it together. You know, you can start with the chrome mirrors. Again, it's metal. It's solid. It is chrome. Um, the, the way the door handle feels, uh, the way the buttons feel, all the switch gear. You know, the little the chrome surrounds around the the vents. How the vents function. It just, everything feels very solid. It feels very robust. And it doesn't feel anything was uh, was sacrificed in the design of these uh, of this platform. Even, even how the, the sunroof function and goes back. You know, there's no delay. It's very smooth. Um, you know, it just, uh, it just moves efficiently and there's no extra fluff involved there. Um, if you look, you know, even on the, uh, even on the door cards, the chrome accents around the door handles and what it's just it's all it's all pretty high quality um it's very nice it doesn't you know it, it's not th to the standard of today's luxury but the, the standards of quality are different you know something luxurious doesn't have to be of a high quality it just has to give an appearance um because people aren't expecting things to last as long as they did uh when stuff like this was designed you can't really talk about day 123s without getting under the hood, and especially when you're bringing up things like uh, build quality and the mechanical nature of things. Um, you know, at first glance, you know, this car does have a lot of mechanical downsides with the vacuum systems that are pretty intricate and pretty much run everything in the car. Um, vacuum leaks are usually the downfall or the majority or lead to the majority of the problems that people have um, with this chassis. But if you keep your... Uh, vacuum line sorted and don't let things get a hand you know a lot of these lines get cracked and whatnot then you're usually okay but everything other than that is uh, fairly and i hate to use the word bulletproof but it is pretty true um everything from the mechanical linkages you know everything's linkage driven so it's really important to keep you know your your linkage balls looped up everything kind of adjusted and uh you know maintained correctly and lubed up um again it's, it's all right here 
it's all uh, you know e easily accessible. Um, there's no there's no uh, lost room. Everything is efficiently placed, and it's fairly easy to work on. I mean, you got your fuel filters here, um, your secondary fuel filter there. I mean, it's all you can just unscrew it, work on it easily. Your power steering pump. Here's your oil filter back there. Again, you don't you're not having to jack anything up at, at this point. You can just grab it right there. Uh, it's just super accessible. Um, fuse boxes are up there. Uh, again, it's 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 simple. It's in the simplicity makes it uh, kind of beautiful in that sense that you know uh, it doesn't require a whole lot of monkeying to kind of understand and figure out what this car is all about, even for a novice. All right, and for aspect number three, it is uh, the fact that it's a diesel. I, uh, I, I've never personally owned a, a diesel vehicle. Um, I've had them for work. I've driven all types of 2016, 17, 18, 19 Dodge Ram, uh, Cummins turbo diesel, six sevens and whatnot. You know, I've driven, uh, seven, three Fords, but you know, there's just something special about these old diesel Mercedes. Um, what was it, but the OM603, this is a, this is a joy soul engine. Um, they're super reliable, uh, they are easy to work on, and they're not fast. <laughs> uh, you know, when tuned properly, they can, they can produce decent power, uh, have decent pickup, but at the end of the day, these cars are painfully slow. Um, it, doesn't, uh, it doesn't make it any less usable, um, but you just have to you know, realize that going into uh, going into this relationship because when you own an old car or an old Mercedes it really does turn into a, uh, a relationship when dealing with all the issues and whatnot that can come from old car ownership so yeah I mean that it from that standpoint it's uh, it's fun to have something diesel all right well let's do a little uh, let's do a little pull here um, you the car has a small turbo. I wouldn't say it changes things a whole lot. Again, mine could definitely use some tuning, but that's foot to the floor. But it wraps nicely, you know, but again, that's definitely not fast. I'm sure everyone's seen a whole bunch of, uh, of wide open throttle videos of guys trying to figure out whether or not their car is making, uh, making the correct amount of power is too slow or has the wrong shift points but this one's not not too bad um it doesn't it, it's not very peppy until it gets warm uh, and then the power definitely picks up i definitely have some transmission tuning to do uh between the vacuum lines and some of the adjustability features you can kind of tinker with up front but other than that it's not uh it's not too bad um you know the the, the diesel character characteristics of driving you definitely have to plan ahead when you're pulling out um, you know, but that combined with the mechanical sounds it makes and the type of driving that takes place where, you know, it definitely, it definitely takes you up, takes you a little while to get up to speed, but once you're up to speed, you know, you can cruise at 70, 80 miles an hour on the highway. Absolutely no problem turning a little, little over 3000, almost 4,000 RPM, uh, which seems high, but is actually, uh, pretty normal for these motors. And uh, again, it just makes it a pretty, uh, pretty enjoyable, uh, interesting driving experience. It's just not what um, it's just not what people expect, I guess. And uh, it is impressive when you have the car loaded down that it just scoots along on the highway. Um, this one, I have to deal with a little bit of steering slot. Probably could use um, a couple outer tie rods, but we're still working out the kinks of it. But it's all part of the process of uh, kind of fine tuning an older car that sat for a while. So, uh, so yeah, those are those are my three things. Um, and obviously, there's a lot more to be lot, you know enjoyed and to be taken away from this car. But you know, if you're ever thinking about getting into a W123, definitely do it. Um, if they're not rusty, they're uh, only appreciating in value if you can find a clean one. Uh, they've got a great a great community in the Mercedes world. 
Um, parts are readily available. There's always one or two in the junkyard with you know three, four hundred thousand miles. So if you can get one that has a lower mile or a lower mileage car, then you should be uh, you should be good to go. So uh, if you got any questions or comments about uh, my W123 or W123s in general, just drop it down there in the comments. And as always, don't forget to uh, subscribe if you want to see more uh, more content. You know, I don't really pick a, a genre or a type of car. We've got lots of different cars between Range Rovers, Mercedes, uh, Volvos, Toyotas, and whatnot. So we're always trying to keep it uh, keep it interesting and, and mix it up a little bit. Um, the uh, the 95 long wheelbase will be leaving this week, but hopefully we'll have something to fill its spot uh, when we try to get some of the other stuff get going. So appreciate uh, you guys tuning in, and uh, we'll make some more videos here in the future.